Welcome to the Daily Word for the season of Pentecost. Today's reading is from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter four, verses one to six. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort. To maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. United in Christ. When I was little, there was a popular Cantonese folk song about the truth of unity in strength. Two of the verses go like this: One stick of bamboo bends easily, but a bunch of bamboo is difficult to twist. A determined heart, as tenacious and brave, unity brings strength. Undivided cooperation. We resolve every burden with ease. Together, without a doubt, everything may go well. This song and today's lesson share a common truth. The Apostle Paul encourages disciples in Ephesians chapter four, verse one to six, to be united in heart as well. However, reality tells us that the church is made up of Christians from all walks of life. Each believer comes from a unique social, economic, cultural, and personal background, which molds their decision and action. How difficult it is to uphold unity amongst them! However, unity among believers is made possible by the Spirit. Paul makes it clear in the Scriptures that the root of Christian unity is based on the Trinity. We share the same God, the Father, God the Savior, and God the Holy Spirit. That is what binds Christian together and makes unity possible. Paul reiterates the seven ones in verses four to six: one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God. Which are the core elements of Christian unity? In theory, unity in Christ is possible. Yet, in reality, unity in church fellowship often encounters many challenges. If people hold on to their self-righteousness and interact with one another according to their old values and ways, conflict will arise and testimony of Christian unity. Will be lost. Therefore, Paul reminds us that the keys to unity are love and peace. In everything, treat each other with humility, gentleness, and patience. Then, hopefully, the church may testify to and reflect God's glory to the society. How heartbreaking would God be if division? Strife and corruption were developed in the church. Unity in the church community is never easy, so Paul reminds us to make every effort to maintain it. It is said that there is an ancient monastery which was once glorious in the past. Many pilgrims came from afar, and the sound of endless praise and worship filled the air. But the glorious days of yesteryear were gone, and the old abbot grieved for its decline. He heard that there was a hermit master on a mountain somewhere, full of wisdom. Therefore, after a long journey, he came to ask the master on how to revive the monastery. The master replied, "I don't have any answer to your question." But do you know that one of you is Jesus in disguise? 
the old abbot returned to the monastery and shared his experience with everyone. They looked at each other and pondered in their hearts who Jesus incarnate was most likely to be, because Jesus can disguise himself as anyone. Everyone is possible, so they dared not take it lightly and treated each other like Jesus. It didn't take long for this deserted monastery to regain its former glory, with its flock returned to worship. Where there is unity, there is strength, regardless of how insignificant a part is within the church community. Be it a pencil stroke, a musical note, or a mechanical gear, by itself it has little value. But when combined with other lines, notes, and gears, working together, purposefully and harmoniously, it can create beautiful drawing, melodious song, or a powerful machine. In order for believers to be united in the church community today, we must regard every brother and sister as the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Let us have a time of reflection. The Apostle Paul exhorted the believers of the church in Ephesus to lead a life worthy of your calling. Does it apply to Christians living in Hong Kong in the 21st century? Why? Living in a highly commercialized, individualistic, and economically diversified city would somewhat affect the attitudes and values of Christians. How can we maintain unity? What important revelation does today's scripture teach us? When conflict within the church community arises, how do you apply the teaching of unity in practice? Do you know how to ask for help from the Lord, who is God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all? Let us pray. Most gracious God, we humbly pray for a holy Catholic Church, filled it with all truth, in all truth, with all peace. Where it is corrupt, purge it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where anything is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen and confirm it. Where it is in want, furnish it. Where it is divided, heal it, and unite it in your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen.